I feel like because yeah. I've already trained three people on this, that this new guy should just know. So what are some of the difficulties and complexities of spending more time in the office versus being out in the field? Everything's getting done on time. I'm not having to ask somebody to do it. I just, I know it's getting done. Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown, and this is the Hook Better Leads podcast. And today, we've got Nick Pello on. What is the company name? North State Builders. North State Builders. Uh, framing. And uh, you've had different types of businesses over the years. Yes, sir. Um, we're going to ask some questions around, you know, being in the field versus office work and the the grieving process that sometimes goes a, goes along with having to be in the office when you like yeah. shit done. Wearing every hat. Comes. What's up? Wearing every hat. <laughs> yeah. And just the different pros and cons, right? About like, What's what are the differences? What are, like yeah, we know we need to get this office shit right, but God, it feels good to be in the field and maybe more like quality control and stuff like that. So we're gonna talk about that, Nick. If you don't mind, just giving me a few minute background about how you came into this business. Uh, let's see. You know, my dad was a contractor. Uh, he, but tile specifically. So around 12 years old is when I started setting tile. I was doing floors on my own at 16. Um, then I got into building log cabins with another contractor, 16, 17, 18. I fell in love with carpentry over tile. And, you know, that individual that was mentoring me with building log cabins, he got sick. He ended up passing away with cancer. I ended up joining the military came back, put my bags on, and I started framing again right out the gate. Um, never got to find another mentor or a builder that did log cabins, so stick framing was the next best thing. But that's pretty much how I got into it, and that's what I continued with. So what was difficult about growing up with a contractor as a father? And is there anything that you took inspiration from or you learned from that that you're trying to apply? I know you have three daughters now. Is there anything that you learned or uh, are trying to improve upon? Family is the most important. Um, the work-life balance, it has to be there. Um, my dad, you know, he was a workaholic. He had attention to detail. Like, I don't think I've ever met anybody that has the attention to detail as my dad he had very high end clients. He was able to keep up with, you know, the best of the best. And, um, I think that's one thing I took from him was the attention to detail. Cause that was always hard tool has its spot, you know, kind of thing. If you borrow anything, it has to go back in the same exact spot. Um, and then the work life balance of being there for your children when they need you. And that's, that's something I've always been there for. You know, I coached softball with my daughters, and that was one thing he did with me growing up was coach all my sports, any anything I did. So, smart. I, uh, you know, growing up holding the flashlight for my dad on working on cars, oh, yeah. and, and uh, yeah. there's a meme about that recently. It was like I realized it was it wasn't always that I did something wrong, you know, because there's like you know, dads getting mad at their kids for doing something. It's like half the time he didn't know what tool he wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, my dad was really detail oriented too, but he was so specific. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I love my dad. I'm not, he's also like a new man. You know what I mean? He's, re he's like not retired, but you know, he's trying to kind of figure that out. And That's he, my dad right yeah, now. Yeah. He's like, you know, like dads have a hard time retiring. Sometimes he could have retired, but yeah. Um, but he also, he's kind of, I know he's gone through a journey on all that because, well, he had four sons and I was okay. the last one and he kind of, you know, you've already told three people <laughs> how to do this, something, <laughs> how to do it. So this guy yep. knew it already, you know, and then, um, now you do that in work too. I do that as a boss. Sometimes I'm like, I feel like, cause yep. I've already trained three people on this, that this new guy should just know he shouldn't yeah. be an idiot. And so it's tough trying to train people. And I know my dad's had a particularly hard time with that. He's an engineer. He's an electrical engineer. And he's got very specific ideas about the way things should be done. So he's 
He's five years out from retirement, but he's been unable to find an apprentice that's stuck. I got you. It's a pretty big business, but it's his job is kind of stuck. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a common problem with trying to pass off work is like trying to find people that do it how we want it done. Well, I'll tell you a story about my dad. My dad is, he's been retired since 08. Um, He, they own 21 acres and his dream has always been to own a big barn, um, a steel building barn, 50 by 40. He went around trying to find somebody to come out and do it for him. He got a bunch of bids. At one point, he decided, I'm going to build it myself. He is 65 years old. He went down to an auction, bought a scissor lift. He built that thing entirely by himself. And he actually re-engineered a few things when it came to the building and sent it off to Simpson. And now Simpson has redesigned their building to his specs because he felt that this was a better way to do it. They went through, they did their engineering on it. I mean, that's the type of person my dad is, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, so Simpson now with their kits, when it comes to those steel buildings, they're, they redesigned for him. They're redesigned on his design now. <laughs> it's that's like, pretty cool. So what are some of the difficulties and complexities of spending more time in the office Versus being out in the field. What are some of the pros and cons to being in the office? Pros, I would say everything's getting done on time. Um, I'm not having to ask somebody to do it. I just, I know it's getting done. Um, I would say the difficulties are is I'm in the office and I'm not in the field. Don't have my bags on. I'm not with the guys. Um, I'm not able to catch mistakes before they happen, you know, cause when I'm out in the field, I'm like a hawk. I'm looking around. I have a very specific way of doing things. So Rilla allows you to listen to uh, it's, in your, it's an AI in your pocket, yeah. listens to the appointment. It's pretty crazy what they do. It gives a script, it's everything they said, it breaks down some statistics for you. Analyze talk ratio, interactivity, like how you and I are interacting back and forth. Uh, long as yeah, modeling, like all honestly, those things. this is the shit that I most believe in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Enhancing You're about to put math yeah. and data around something that used to be my magic skill. And I can see when it's not getting done the way that I want it to be done. Um, I think that's the biggest drawback. Common, common thing, you know, like people are dealing with. So, so it's with everybody. Yeah. Everybody. The biggest drawback is what? Just not being out there, not being able to catch the mistakes before they happen. Um, And then going and checking on the job and seeing the mistake later on in the afternoon and realizing, you know, Hey, you know, you pull the guy aside or, you know, the whole, crew show them the mistake um you're kind of kicking yourself as you're leaving because you know you're just you're going to spend more money on the guys tearing it down and redoing it you know and that kind of thing so it is it's a common thing you know i hear it from all the contractors up here i would say as a small business owner it does feel because you you got to do the office stuff too and sometimes the office stuff is like no one else can do that but i can do that but some of the labor stuff maybe. I can get somebody to do that decently well. And I, I've been using um, 80% done by somebody else is 100% fucking awesome. What is that? 80% done by somebody else is 100% fucking awesome. <laughs> That's a good motto right there. I like that. And I think that there's like, it does feel like when you're early in business, like and not early, but you know, like a million or two, like that, that area, like yeah. there's a lot of like, just feels like whack i would say even up to whatever like it feels like whack-a-mole it's like all right administrative finance like yeah labor like that 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 and they just keep on popping up you know and it's yeah it, it feels like we're never really gonna get it right and i think it's almost like okay to accept we may no, not it is because I'm not perfect either. Yeah. You know, I make mistakes in the field as well. Um, yeah, none of us are perfect. No. I think it's uh, 
sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow. I, I walk away and I almost feel as if I didn't do a good enough job teaching them sometimes on some of the mistakes. So I think I, it's more of a, I think I take it to heart more, you know, on that, but I do hear it. Like in your guys in framing, is it more like the, is it the one-off kind of unusual bits that that get messed up or is it like the consistent stuff? Cause I feel like maybe even like recording videos for them, if it was the consistent stuff, it's almost like you could like have somebody record you doing it or something and then give those videos to, to them. Yeah. And I, I do do that. I, I do make videos. Um, consistently. I think my biggest problem with everybody is uh, nail patterns and not over nailing. Um, you over nail too much. You're going to split the wood. You know, the integrity is completely gone. Um, so nailing top plates, making sure that you nail over a stud. So your electrician and your plumber don't come in and they're not biting a bit on a nail and yeah. throwing them. You know what I mean? That's, I think the biggest thing that I've had, the hardest thing I've taught to, for people to retain that knowledge. Um, people just grab a gun and they just go crazy sometimes. Even guys four or five years into it, I think have a hard time with it. At least the guys I've hired. Um, well, it's also like a little bit of like, I, how to get the passion for the work, you know, how to get them in the same mode that you're in, which is like, I care very much, obviously about the material costs, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. How yep. to get them to care as much as you do. It's like, I think that that's always a, a topic with the owner or, you know, leaders doing the work versus like a person who doesn't care and frankly isn't probably getting paid as much you know so it's oh, like I, that's these the, guys are making good money oh okay that's cool yeah no we, we pay our guys extremely well um anywhere you're starting out at 25 almost 30 bucks an hour sometimes you know if you got tools we'll put you on a site you know so guys are making great money i yeah how do you just to kind of move the discussion along? How can you get people around you that have your back? And how do you know when to listen to other people worth versus like when to trust your gut? The, I think the people that have your back, they just kind of come into your life and you don't expect it, you know? Um, and then over time that relationship develops then it turns into a brotherly love type of thing. Now, next thing you know, you got family members, you know, that are not family. Um, when it comes to listening to my gut, I've failed at that a few times. Um, beginning of this year was one. And I should have listened to the people around me and I should have ignored my gut. Do you, you tell know, us I the story? Because... You were talking about this before we did the podcast, but could you just give us the the emotional recount of the story that happened? <laughs> it's a it's a hard story to tell. Um, we we hired an individual that you know kind of you know we gave them all the keys to the kingdom when it came to our finances and our bookkeeping and everything else. Um, there was a lot of mistakes made, and you know it was a six figure hit. You know, this was an so, in-house employee, in-house employee. So and it was, names? no, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. no. I, uh, I like to move on with my life. Yeah. You know, I understand. But like essentially some accounting rigmarole that were they trying to do something nefarious or they just mess up? I think so. Because, uh, two months before they quit, they stopped paying our bills. Um, next thing you know, in January, we're getting phone calls from our suppliers. Hey, you know, we haven't seen a payment from you in, you know, 90 days, 120 days. Um, next thing you know, our bills that we thought were getting paid throughout this entire time. Now, all of a sudden we're a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Now we're $150,000 in debt, $200,000 in debt, you know, and this money is, you know, we don't have it you know, kind of thing. So now we've just been building up and getting back to where we were. So yeah. yeah it was I don't know a ton about accounting or anything like that. We have outside people that we use. I know that, you know, my friend Aaron, 
Andrews, uh, she was just talking this morning about not using like 1 800 accountant, yeah. <laughs> uh, but she's like, uh, or like Fiverr, or weird little places. But yeah. it's an in house employee that's it's hard to like, it's hard to fathom an in house employee f- effing up that bad. It's hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. It really is. Cause, um, like I said, I was the one that had his back and I wanted to bring him on when everybody else was telling me not to, you know, my business partner wanted nothing to do with them. And was he a friend? No, it was a guy that had a resume that looked amazing on paper. Yeah. You know, and Those amazing on paper resumes. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, for the, well, I think we hired him in August. Yeah, it was August when we hired him, and then he was gone the first week of January. Hmm. So it was a very quick in and out type of deal. And it definitely, definitely hurt the company. I, I just want to, that. just because we're talking about a problem, since my friend Aaron Andrews, uh, it's a, it's level accounting and advisory. It's nice to have an outside company that does stuff like that. So, and they work only with contractors. So just okay. one that's looking for an accountant right now that actually knows what they're doing with contractors level accounting and advisory, reach out to them. I think like is the it- other one that sometimes happens is like people like taxes, <laughs> like people like haven't paid yeah. their Roll taxes in like a year or something, and that can be a pretty big deal. So, but well, she, also, great- she also finds ways to save on taxes, which I think yeah. is good. Contractors love the catch all because it makes every single one of their roof builds easier and more profitable. Protective netting wraps facade and landscaping to prevent from left behind nails and damage. Homeowner referrals bring you more jobs, and insurance supplements bring you more profits. But my favorite part the branding. Well, I have a great CPA. You know, oh, that nice. does our taxes and all that type of stuff. It was, yeah. It was like accounts payable, accounts receivable stuff. Yeah. So. I think it's always good. Like in our case, we have two outside companies. Like, and it's just literally like one's more strategic and one's more like bookkeeping type stuff. So just. Yeah. Always good. to Like from my point of view, it's almost like it's hard to over invest in doing money right. <laughs> Through that, yeah. yeah, no, I, that was, like I said, that was a hard lesson for me, um, a very expensive and costly lesson, you know, so yeah, I think that's another reason why I kind of stepped back and I'm in the office more, you know, that's a whole nother reason. So just making sure Sorry. it gets done right. I mean, I know that that one was obvious that it was time to fire that guy, I guess. Um, But can you talk to me about just because we're talking about employees gone wrong kind of situations. Talk to me about your criteria for fire for firing and keeping people and how you make sure to do that um, as best as you can, I guess. I might not be the best person for this because I'm always told that I give more chances than I should. You well, know, talk to us uh, about that. Talk to us about <laughs> what 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 is you experience because of that? Um, I will, I will tell you, I am a zero tolerance when it comes to drugs and alcohol on the job Mm -hmm. site. I will fire right, right then and there. If that happens, you know, Mm -hmm. always been that guy. Um, just a little weed, bro. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. We, we were friends with this dude, Josh Bigger, who's a roofing guy. He's like, he's called best damn roofer. And he yeah. like, he went viral this last week because he said he was doing acid on a job site. And I yeah. don't think, I don't think he really was, but I think he was messing no, it was with a people. Joke. Yeah. He yeah. likes to, he likes to trigger people. Yeah. No, I've, uh, I've had guys um, doing cocaine in the blue room, you yeah, know, okay. it's like yeah. go home kind of thing. I'll, yeah. I'll have your last check in an hour kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but other than that, um, when it comes to chances, I second, third chances, I, I've been known to do that quite often. Um, when it comes to no call, no shows, I've had guys do that three days in a row and 
uh, I'll bring them back, you know, kind of thing, you know, put your bags back on, let's get to work, let's proceed as business as usual type of thing. Um, usually the guys will, <sighs> some of them they'll leave on their own. And then there has been those moments where I've had to make the tough call and, you know, fire them after so many chances, but but yeah. So you've really given people too many chances and you've kind of regretted it sometimes? Sometimes I've regretted it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Other times, the other, you know, I've given people too many chances and they ended up working out and they're still with us today. You yeah. know? So, but when it comes I to the firing, it. yeah. And Not then how about hiring? What are, what are some tips? Like, to, like let's say uh, you one year ago, what are some things you would tell yourself around hiring and um, or any, anything else that you would, would tell you one year ago, if you could. Uh, a year ago, I would tell myself, you know, I, when it comes to hiring, I always give people a two week kind of, you know, test run, you know, and I let them know, I'm going to give them a two week test run. I'm going to pay them below, you know, what I think they're worth because we're going to have an interview. We're going to talk. I, I've had guys come in and talk like they've been framing for 20 years. Um, know everything. Sky's the limit. Um, I'll pay them 20 bucks an hour for that two week time just to kind of get an idea of who they are. And during that two week time, we'll I'll reevaluate them kind of thing. Um, so my hiring method i guess is more in the field you know I, I give them a chance out in the field to kind of see who they are and what they're about and that kind of thing so i think when it comes to framing i could tell you how i've been hired in the past and i've just walked on job sites talked to a contractor for 10 minutes hey you ready to work today sure why not put my bags on and i'll go to work you know that's how we've kind of done it up here for years I think I might, I might have had a framing job that way at one point in my life. Uh, That's it. I think I just smoked a lot of blunts, though, when I was doing it, to be honest. <laughs> um, Why I, just not? Remember, I don't remember a ton of it. I remember I was I'm more of a helper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, window yeah. frame. I think they let me do more windows and doors. Well, then that's more finished then. Yeah. Yeah, we're more so we're more on the rough side of things. Okay. But, um, well, I'm saying windows and door framing is that still the is that still the finished side? Well, are you installing windows or are you installing doors? No, no, no. Or, we were we were framing out the windows. I think they gave. I is it are the windows and doors easier to frame than so some of the framing R, You were just framing the ROs for the windows and doors. Probably you were just putting probably. the packages together and kind of you know, somebody would come in and throw them in the wall for you. Probably. I just, I'm not, what I'm trying to tell you, Nick, is I'm not sure they should have let me onto these job <laughs> sites. Yeah. Uh, I honestly, I, it was a, like, it's funny to even remember that I probably did that for three weeks at one point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one yeah. of those things where it's like, I was with a guy <laughs> this is a weird story, Nick, but like I was with the guy smoking weed or something like that. And then it was like, Hey, you want to come with me tomorrow? And then I was like, essentially his helper for like three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But it happens like that. Yeah. It definitely does. Um, I yeah. remember it pleasantly. I mean, I, I remember like feeling like it felt good. It feels good to like, kind of like, it's a good, it's like a cool job. Like it feels like it's like, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, every day at the end of the day, when you walk away, I think that's another reason why I'm I'm having a hard time in the office because that feeling is, you know, I, I get it a little bit when it comes to finishing office work, but it's nothing compared to walking to a fresh slab, you know, or to, you know, just seeing concrete and then building something. And then at the end of the day, you get to stand back and look at what you built and, you know, you're one day closer for a family that lost their home in the fire is able to get back. You know what I mean? That's it's nothing beats that feeling. And every day it gets better and better. 
So yeah, last week we, uh, my wife and Sydney, our salesperson went out and helped the client roof, uh, garage, but it was kind of crazy to me. Like, cause I tried to do as much of it as I could. Like I tried to like actually be involved cause I'm trying to understand our clients better. And we have a lot of roofing companies. Yeah. And honestly, at the end of like, it was actually like one or two. We went and grabbed. How many roofing companies you got? Clients? No roofing companies. You said you got multiples or. Oh, no, no, no. I, uh, we have clients are roofing companies and we just, uh, oh. so we have like 71 roofing companies that are our clients around the country. Okay. Um, but I was out there and like, then we went and grabbed tacos at the end of the day. And I don't, for some reason to me, tacos just go with roofing. Uh, yeah. so we had the tacos. It was, there was, it just was so satisfying to like look at that roof, you know what I mean? That was completed and like it's almost like like I had some cuts on my hands and some different things, but I was like, this is it's just so satisfying to see a finished job of any type that's physical yeah. in comparison with my everyday job is in the office. And it's so not satisfying sometimes. I'm trying to get that like I like getting shit done and I get a lot done, but it the compare it's just so different than the satisfaction yeah. you have from like sweating your butt off and then like hurting yourself and then like looking at a final thing that's like yes yeah putting your blood sweat and tears and all of it out there yeah i i i love that that's yeah yeah i need to get out there more that's yeah it's like it's crazy though because at this point in the business you're probably worth more in the office like and ultimately that does affect I'm not speaking for you because you got to do whatever you enjoy. I do think there's some beauty to that. Do what you enjoy. Yeah. But there's like, if you could, let's say, be in the office, be a, like, make the company a little bigger and get like five more employees next year. That's like a pretty big thing, obviously for those five employees lives. If you could master some of the office stuff, you know? So I think that that's yeah. the hardest back and forth is like, I'm doing a lot of, even, in our business where I have to step back from the busy work of the business to make sure everyone's okay. And to make sure we have the right systems and processes in place so that we can grow. And I have to like, I have to do that sometimes. Like that has to be part of my job. Otherwise, no, who else is going to do it? <laughs> you know? yeah. No, I mean, we, at our biggest, we, I, we had 22 employees out in the field. We had four people in the office. I mean, we were, that was that was the biggest we grew and then we kind of started winter came and we started downsizing a little bit um and yeah now we're where we're at right now but that was the biggest i we grew it at one point and that's within what 2020 to 23 yeah you know so three year time frame so well, what would you like people to check out after this podcast? Is there a .com that they can check out? Um, we, I don't have a website. We okay. all, most of our jobs are all word of mouth. Okay. Um, so we don't do much advertising. I do the, the Instagram, the YouTube and that kind of thing, but I'm not very, um, consistent i would say if they where could they contact you or get a, a check out your stuff if they wanted to uh what nsb pillow framing on instagram uh nick pillow on facebook or youtube it's north state builders you awesome. know well check him out guys and thank you everyone for watching or listening i hope you guys have a great day and podcast is put on by hookagency.com hook agency all over social and uh, Hook Agency appreciates you watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of the things. Rate and review the podcast on iTunes if you're, if you're listening there. Thank you, everyone. Bye.